Scrivener from Speak Life and a Happy New Year to you if you're watching on the 1st of January or if you're watching in the future. Uh, how are those resolutions going? Hmm? Hmm? I'm only kidding with you. Uh, you're very welcome to join us on this uh, odyssey, this journey through the scriptures. We're calling it Reading Between the Lines. Uh, it's a phrase a day that takes you through the Bible using the famous lines that have passed into common parlance. Things like, he gave up the ghost, or they turned the world upside down, or the writings on the wall. All these famous phrases that we use every day, and we're going to hop from line to line to line to line, taking us from Genesis all the way through to Revelation, uh, in the beginning, all the way through to Hallelujah. Uh, if you want to join us for that ride, you don't need to be a Christian. Um, if you just want to spend a couple of minutes each day getting familiar with the Bible and with Jesus its central character then do subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, do like us on Facebook Speak Life UK and then you'll get your updates each day but without further ado uh, let's start with our very first phrase and appropriately enough our first phrase is in the beginning uh, let me read to you from Genesis chapter 1 and then from John chapter 1 uh, first I'm going to read Genesis 1 uh, from verses 1 to 3 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then we go to uh, John chapter 1. Uh, John chapter 1, reflecting back on Genesis chapter 1, he writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So at New Year, everyone wants to make a beginning. Uh, new year, new you, and all of that. But before we think about the beginnings that we are meant to make in the world, let's think about the beginning that God has already made, because His beginning conditions all other beginnings. So let's think about this phrase, in the beginning. I wonder what you think was there in the beginning. If you wind back the clock into the depths of forever, before there were people, before there were planets, before there were protons, what was there? I reckon there are four answers to that question. They're not hard and fast answers. There's overlap between them. But I think you can either say there was nothing in the beginning, chaos, power, or love. And I'm just going to take a minute to go through each of those four responses. What about those people who think in the beginning there was nothing? Uh, surprisingly, it's quite a common belief. It's the belief that uh, in the beginning there was just this big, dark, empty expanse of empty space, which of course is not nothing. That's a whole lot of black something. But that's the popular imagination. But the story goes something like this. Before there was a universe, there couldn't be anything because the universe is everything, right? And so before the universe was, there was nothing, and then, bang, everything came out of nothing. Now, as miracles go, that's pretty astonishing. Uh, as a Christian, I believe in the virgin birth of Jesus, but this would be the virgin birth of the cosmos uh, without a virgin. Uh, it would be the, the ultimate conjuring trick, you know, nothing up the sleeve, no sleeve, no magician, just pure magic out of nowhere. And even if you believed in such a miracle, what would it mean about life in 2016? It would mean that life is ultimately nothing, but you've got to make something out of a nothing. This year, you'd better be a self-creator, a self-made man, a self-made woman. But in the end, it's only nothing. That's one answer. In the beginning, there was nothing. Uh, what about the second answer? In the beginning, there was chaos. Now, there are religious views and, uh, and non-religious versions of this view of the world. Uh, the religious views are, well, my goodness, in all the ancient religions and, and myths, creation basically comes from the gods uh, squabbling and fighting, and maybe the loser god gets cast out and the earth is just the body of this dead monster. Or uh, there's been a cosmic storm that's blown through heaven and earth is just the debris. Or, I don't know, all these kind of myths that people tell about where creation has come from. It's come from chaos and struggle and fighting. Uh, but there's a non-religious version about that, isn't there? Uh, where does the world come from? Ultimately, ultimately some people think that the, the bedrock, bottom line truth of where the world has come from has been bang, crash, fighting, struggle, 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 selfishness, 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 and here we all are. It's the chaos story, really. And if that were the bedrock truth, about where we've come from and about what conditions all reality. What would that mean for 2016? It would mean that 2016 is all about struggle, wouldn't it? So let's think about a third option. A third option is, in the beginning there was power. 
Again, there is a non-religious and a religious version to it. The non-religious version just says, in the beginning, there were just these iron laws of physics, and even today we just dance to their tune. That's the non-religious version. The religious version says, in the beginning there was a power, but we like to give that power a name tag. Let's call that power God. And so that's the kind of the, the view. And, and so often when people think in the beginning there was gods, the god they have in mind is pure power. The god they have in mind is usually a distant individual, high on power, low on personality, with nothing and no one besides him or it for company, just his own thoughts for company, just twiddling his celestial thumbs, just itching to get on and create because he's only got his own thoughts for company. It's, it's this strange view that God knows nothing about caring, sharing, back and forth, give and take. There is just a single god who is a power. If that were true, what would life be? Life would be slavery. Life would be all about submission, bowing to the power of God. Thank God that's not who God actually is. The Bible gives a wonderful answer to the question, what was there in the beginning? The fourth answer is love. In Genesis chapter 1, uh, we learn about in the beginning God. And then in, the verse, in verse 2 it says there is the Spirit of God hovering. And then in verse 3 we meet the Word of God who brings light and life to the cosmos. In John chapter 1, he reflects back on Genesis and he says, yeah, yeah, in the beginning there was that divine word who's always existed with his Father and with another person called the Holy Spirit. According to the Bible, in the beginning there was love because in the beginning there was a Father loving his Son in the joy of the Holy Spirit. That is the good news at the heart of reality that we have come from love, that we are defined by love, that we are shaped by love, that we are destined for love. And therefore, this year, there is a remarkable possibility. You see, this year is not defined by, by terrifying nothingness, or by brutal chaos, or, or by a distant power. This world is ruled by love, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Life is not about fate, or fighting, or a force, but a Father calling you into fellowship. And it's His resolution to draw you in.